Hello everyone, Gary Simon of Coursetro. Welcome to this brand new 100% free course that's going to show you how to build native desktop applications using something called the Electron Framework. Now this basically allows you to create these applications for Mac, Windows, and Linux, and it allows you to do it while using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So in this video, I wanna provide you with a real quick look at the actual application we're going to be building from scratch in order to learn Electron. And also I'm gonna show you something called the Electron API demos, which we'll do first. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, Coursetro.com, where you're gonna find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six pack each month, that's it. Now also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. Now switching over to my desktop, if we scroll down on this page, which is at github.com electron forward slash electron API demos, you'll see that we can use git clone to replicate this repository. Now, the first thing you're gonna need before you can actually use git is git itself at git-scm.com forward slash downloads. Download it for your operating system if you don't yet have it. And once you do that, copy this line. We'll go to our console or command line. Right click to paste that here using Windows. And then we're going to CD into it. All right, and then we're going to run npm install and npm start. Now, by the way, npm is the node package managers, which also means you need node.js, which you can download at nodejs.org and follow the instructions uh, by the all the default settings when you install it. And that will, will by default install npm for you so that you can access npm at the command line. All right, and here we are, and it has started the application. So the way this is structured, is on the left side, we have the different sections of where and what the API can actually handle. So first we have the section of windows. You can create and manage windows. So under here on the right side, we can see that it provides us with some basic information about this API and it shows you examples. Like so for instance, to create a new window, you can click on view the demo and it shows you a actual window being created in Electron. And then also really handy, it shows you the code associated with this. So you can also handle windows and crashes. You can use menus, and this is all stuff that we're gonna be covering. Um, you can open external links. Communication between two processes like windows, we're also gonna be handling that through the IPC throughout this course. And just some other stuff like taking a screenshot. So this is really, really handy especially after the course and you want to develop your own app and you know perhaps I didn't cover something that you need to know, refer back to this API demos first and then check Google and Stack Overflow if you get stuck. All right, so now I want to show you the actual application that we're going to use. So I'm going to launch it right here. All right, loading, loading, there we go. Okay, so this is the current price of Bitcoin. And as you can see, this is a very, very simple interface. And we also see here that we have choose a target price. Now, by the way, this current price of Bitcoin, we're going to access it by integrating the Axios HTTP library into our app. And this will allow us to grab it. And then every 30 seconds, we get the updated price. So notify me when, and by the way, check out how this window is actually opaque. Also check out how it's sticky in that if I click any other thing else, it's always gonna remain on top regardless of what's happening. So going back and launching this window here, if I set a price, say for instance, I want to be notified when Bitcoin reaches over $10,000, which what's really insane about that, it was actually $11,300 earlier today. We'll say 10,000 and then hit update. Now we can see what just happened here is that it communicated that information from that window back to this window right here. And it's updated and what's gonna happen is if this ever increases uh, above 10,000, it's gonna give us a desktop notification. So if I make it intentionally really low, 
and I hit update, then the next time this refreshes in 30 seconds, then we will see this little notification appear. So I'll fast forward until we get to that point. All right, there it is. We see it showed up just down here. And this is just one example that will show you how to hook into native desktop functionality using Electron, okay? So that's basically it. And although it's a very simple app, I actually give you the challenge of extending it so that you could perhaps add more cryptocurrencies to track and probably a lot of other bells and whistles. But with this alone, you're going to learn a lot, I guarantee it. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so the very first thing we need to make sure that we have, and I know I already covered this initially, make sure we have NPM and you can run that with npm hyphen v to check and also node hyphen v. All right, if not, make sure you go to nodejs.org and download what you need for your operating system and then reload your, com your command or console after installing. All right, so next, let's go ahead and create a new folder for our project. I'm gonna say make dir and then crypto hyphen app and then also cd into it. All right, so now we're going to use npm to create a package JSON file, which will store all of our project dependencies. So npm init hyphen y will skip all of the prompts that give you varying questions for these properties right here. All right, and next, what we're gonna do is install Electron itself. So to do that, npm install Electron. We're gonna save it as a dev dependency and also save exact right here. So momentarily this will install and I'll fast forward. All right, it's done. Now I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code, which I can do from the command line here with code in a period. And Visual Studio Code is a very popular, and you know what? It's also made in Electron. So it's a very popular app from Microsoft for a code editor. So in here, by the way, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. I wanna make sure you can see everything that I have here going. The first thing that we wanna do is create a new file. All right, so we're gonna call a new file here in the root folder, main.js. All right, so we'll call this what really is going to bootstrap our application. So before we get back to this, I want to go to our package JSON file, and there's just a couple things we need to reference. Notice it says main at index.js. This needs to match this file right here. So we're gonna change that to main.js. And the reason I'm doing that is to not create any confusion when we actually create an indexed page. So next, I also wanna change this from test and the value here to electron period. Electron period is what you type in order to launch your app. However, this is a shorthand method of just typing npm start instead of having to type this. All right, so save that. And the next thing we're gonna do is open up a quick start guide. So this quick start guide can be accessed here at this URL, electronjs.org forward slash docs tutorial quick hyphen start. And if we scroll down just far enough, we will see kind of just some boilerplate main.js code. And this is everything that we want to copy just within this code block right there. So I'm gonna copy that. We'll go back to our editor, go to main.js and then paste it. Okay, so I want to real quickly just describe what's happening because I didn't wanna to have to type all of this from scratch. Most of it is code you will not have to touch when you're developing your app. So first we have our variables that are defined up here. So we're importing just some necessary modules such as app and browser window from the Electron library. We're also gonna use path and URL to work with path files and their location. All right, so next, as you can see, we already have some handy comments right here, which describe what this does here. Our function create window, nothing happens here just yet, but this provides us with some configuration options. So we have win equals new browser window. This is how you create windows and you can pass in objects here, an object with a bunch of properties such as the width and the height. There are some other 
options that we will also add later on. And then we use when load URL, where we specify the path of the actual template. This doesn't yet exist, but we will create it. And the protocol type is files and slash is true. We don't really have to mess with any of that. We're also have this open dev tool. So if you're familiar with Chrome's dev tools, if you hit control shift I while in Chrome, this is the same thing. It helps you to basically debug and code your app. And we can comment this out by the way, if we don't want to see it, which we'll do later. All right, and then this is just some garbage cleanup here. If a window is closed, we set window null. And down here, these are all other, just three different things using the on method on our app. And really, we don't have to touch them. They're just some things specific to uh, Darwin here, which is specific to Mac OS. And you can read through these comments if you wish. So at this point, we can go ahead and just save it. All right, and Next, we're going to create that index.html file. So to do that, we'll come over here, index.html. All right, and we can go ahead real quickly and refer back to that document, which was not right there. Sorry about that. My toolbar is not working. There it goes. And we can just copy that and then paste it in here. All right, so make sure both of your files are saved and then we can go back to our command line. And by the way, we can go to view and integrated terminal and we could just run our commands here with npm start. All right, with any luck. And by the way, you can see that we have these dev tools that are now open and available for us to use. So this is what this very, very basic app looks like. It's using, you know, it's telling us all of our information. And as you can see, very, very, very simple. Okay, so now in the next section, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the menu section up here. All right, so to this point, we installed our very basic project, and now let's see about integrating an actual menu. All right, so if we refer back here to our main JS file, we can see up at the top, we're importing app and browser window. We're also going to import menu. All right, so after that, within our function create window, we'll put it just here. We're going to create a var variable of menu and set it to menu build from template and then pass in an array and then also an object. All right, so for this object, the very first thing we need to specify is the label. Now the label is what shows up, for instance, right here. This is a label, file, edit, selection. These are all labels, all right? So next we put in a comma and then we put in submenu. And this is an array. So each submenu is, it refers to each of these items like new file, new window, open file, et cetera. All right, so inside of here, it accepts an array of objects. So here's an object. This will be label, and we'll make this a label adjust notification value. All right, and we'll go ahead, and if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can hit Shift Alt in the down arrow key to replicate this two more times. All right, so for this one, we'll change this value to coin market cap. So for instance, if this is clicked, we'll make it load up a browser window with coinmarketcap.com where you can browse cryptocurrency values. And then this one, we'll just make exit. All right, so next, in order to actually make this work, after our menu variable, we need to set menu, set application menu, and then pass in our menu variable just above. Okay, so if we save this and then we go to our integrated terminal or you can use your console, same thing, and run npm start, we will now say that the default menu that was here before, which shows up when you don't have one explicitly set, now is set to the custom menu that we just created. So if we click on any of these, not going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with building out this menu. So how would we actually make a menu clickable? All right, we clicked it, but nothing happened. Well, 
we can detect clicks by just modifying real quickly this section right here. Let's say, for instance, the exit. Very basic command. We want to close the application. So let's go ahead and just organize this a little bit better so that you can see what's happening here. I hate when that happens, by the way. I'm going to shift and tab that and then tab it back in. Okay. So just to make things a little bit better, I'll do the same thing here. All right. So after label, we want to put in a comma and then a click. And then inside of here, you could console log it, for instance, if you wanted to, or make it do whatever you want once a person clicks on that. So the way to quit an application is simply to call app.quit. And it's as simple as that. So going back to our integrated terminal, hit the up arrow key to rerun npm start, click on exit, and voila. Okay. So also, let's see about making this coin market cap up here launch an actual browser window. So to do that, we first at the top need to import. We're going to create a constant called shell. We're going to require from Electron shell. All right. Now coming down for our coin market cap section oops there we go we'll put in the same thing so it's a click and inside of it we'll say shell dot open external and then the url that we want to open all right let's save that and then go back to our integrated terminal oops i just toggled it off npm start let's see click on it and it just showed up off my screen drag it over here there we go very 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 simple as you can see and that's one of the uh, great things about this framework that makes things um, you know pretty much straightforward so let's also create a separator between these two values the adjust notification submenu in the coin market cap submenu and exit right here. So to do this, again, very, very simple stuff. We'll just put in a space right here after that comma, after coin market caps object, and we put in a new object of type and then separator and then comma at the end. All right, so we'll save this, go back to our view Nope, we already have it open. And now if we look at the menu, we can see this nice little separator. And this helps you group your content here for your submenu items. All right, great. So coming up here, we're also going to, I'm going to show you really quickly, you know, because we only have one menu item here. I'm going to show you how to define two or more, even though our application isn't going to have one. It would still be worth just to show you how. So if we close this out real quickly, we'll see that we have one object from here to there with a label and a submenu. You simply replicate that same sort of structure by putting a period or a comma after the last object right here or the first one and creating a new one. So the same thing, label, label. I'll put in info and I will just leave it at that. So now, if we rerun it, I hit control C and that will terminate it by the way, hit Y. And now we have our multiple menus. And that's really just the gist of menus. In this section, we're going to take a look at creating windows. But first, to this point, we really haven't organized our project very much because we haven't had to. We haven't had very many files to work with. So I'm going to switch over to our code editor, and I want to do a little bit of cleanup and a little bit more of organization instead of just having all of our files here in the source section. So what I want to do is create a new file folder called source or SRC. We're going to move our index.html into that. Now, when we do that, we have to update our packaged JSON file, or actually instead our main.js file, and scroll up to this section 
where we have index.html on line 16. We want to change that to source because now it's in the source folder. Make sure you save that there. All right, so also inside of here, because our application has just two windows, we're going to create another index, or not an indexed file, but HTML file. So this will be add.html, all right? And also each one of these will have its own associated JavaScript file so that we can place its associated code inside of it. So let's go ahead and create an index.js. And again, if you recall earlier, that's why I renamed this from index to main. And then also we'll have a add.js. So hopping into our index HTML here, what we want to do is first I'm going to put in, or paste in rather, this section right here. So link rel style sheet, and this is going to reference a file and folder that doesn't yet exist. So we're going to create this right now too. We're going to create an assets and CSS folder. So we're going to do this here in the root. And so this will be assets, and then also inside of here, CSS, and inside of here, we're going to create a main.css and also an add.css. All right, great. So now going back to our index HTML, we're going to get rid of all of this stuff between the body. All right. And I'm just going to put in a div class of row. And by the way, we're not going to be using any CSS framework it's because this is all very minimal. A div class of price container and a P class of subtext and current BTC USD. That's just a label here. And then inside of here, we're going to have an H1 with the actual price of ID. And I'm just going to put in loading right here because that will get replaced once it actually uses inner text to replace it with the value from the API. This is going to be a goal container. And in here is a paragraph with an image source. And this is going to be in assets, images, up.svg, and also a span ID of target price. And one second, I'm referring just to some screen off the side, or the, um, and we're going to put choose a target price, close that span, and the paragraph as well. Okay, I'm going to control B to get rid of that sidebar. All right, so by the way, I had an extra closing here, so let's see, those were already closed, sorry about that. All right, so next after that is just a, a little bit more of HTML. We're gonna have a div ID of write container. This will hold our button. Notify BTN and notify me when. And then finally, just before the closing body tag, we're gonna put in a script source of index.js, which we created earlier and there's nothing inside of it. All right, so we can go ahead and save this now. We won't be adding any more to that. And we're also going to reference real quickly in our add template. So let's hit control B. We'll go to our add HTML. And I'm just going to put in real quickly a exclamation point and enter. We'll give us just some boilerplate HTML here. And so I'm going to put in, I'm going to paste this real quickly. This is just two link references to our main and add CSS files. And then also just some real quick HTML here. I know we haven't touched anything with creating windows just yet, but I'm just doing some necessary setup for our app right here because it makes sense. Notify me when BTC reaches, this is a label. And underneath here, a div class, I'm going to name this one row two, and then a div right here and an input ID of notify val and placeholder equals USD. 
All right, and then after this, we're gonna put in a button. And this ID is gonna be update BTN with an update value caption. And then also we're gonna say AID equals close BTN. And this will be close window for allowing them to close that window. I'm gonna put a BR right here. And then also we're going to have just underneath here, a script source of add.js. All right, so everything here is looking pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And real quickly, I'm going to focus on CSS, but I'm not gonna type it all out. I'm going to include a reference file, or you can check out the written version on my website because each of these tutorials have a full written version. So under main.css, we're gonna copy from the written version right here, all of this. Now there's nothing really special happening. We're importing a custom font, setting up the body, and just referencing all of the elements that I created here. Again, nothing too technical happening here. And then also we're gonna to go to add CSS and we're gonna paste in another set of rule sets right here and there's even fewer right here. And that just styles that little window uh, that pops up when you click on it. All right, so I'm gonna save that and let's go ahead and get our integrated terminal out and run npm start with any luck. All right, there we go. So now this doesn't yet exist. So we need to go ahead and get that image. So if you look at this address right here, we have this SVG graphic. So just pause in it's S3, Amazon AWS.com, Corsetro, tutorial images in up.svg. Right click and you can save this to your desktop. And I'm just gonna save it on my desktop real quickly as up.svg. We want to go ahead and real quickly close this and we'll open up, right click, reveal an explorer. We're gonna go into assets and create an images folder. And then I'm gonna drag from the desktop the SVG graphic that I just saved, just right there. Okay, so now if we go back to the code editor and rerun npm start, with any luck, there we go, it now shows up. Awesome, so of course, nothing here loads just yet. So let's see what happens or what it takes to make this button right here show our add.html section. All right, so if we go under real quickly to our index.js file, I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna go ahead and just import three different modules. So we have const electron equals require electron, very simple, our path for working with files, and then also browser window. This is what's gonna allow us to create an actual window. So const browser window is electron.remote.browser window. All right, so next, Inside of here, just after our const here, we're gonna put in another one, notify BTN is gonna give us the actual element ID. And we'll put in notify BTN. All right, so that's in reference to this button right here. And then going back, We'll say notify btn dot add event listener on click. Then we're going to say function pass in the event, and inside of here is where we want to begin to build out the window. So to do this, we're going to say const model path equals path dot join. This is all for allowing us to find out where that add dot html file is. All right, and then after that, we're gonna say let win equals new browser window. 
and we're going to pass in a width just like when we created the main index.html from our main JS file, a width of 800 or wait, rather, sorry about that, 400 and a height of 200. So this is going to be a smaller window that shows up. And then we're going to say win.on close. Again, we're going to do that cleanup here. Win equals null. And then win.load URL. And this is where we pass in the model path. And then finally, win.show once we have it all ready to go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and give this a shot by saving it. We'll go to view our inspector, or integrated terminal rather. All right, with any luck, we click on this, and there we go. Now, do we really need this menu and this top section right here? No. So how do we get rid of that? It's actually pretty simple. So if I close this out, we're gonna go ahead and right where it says width of 400 and 200, right before that, or it doesn't really matter where you put it, we'll put in frame property with a value of false. So we'll save that, rerun, we'll click on it. By the way, that little inspector is getting annoying, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that. But now, as you can see, we can actually, I uh, no longer have this top menu section right here. All right, so next, let's also see what it takes to make this window transparent. And by the way, in case you're wondering how I can drag this around, there is actually a CSS rule set in add.css that allows me to do this. Okay, so we don't we can't close it yet, and we'll remedy all that first. But let's first take a look to see if we wanted to make this trans uh, this window transparent. So this is two steps involved. First, we have to add another property right here of transparent true, and then we have to go to our add CSS, and we have to define just at the bottom a new rule set of HTML body with the background set to RGBA with your color right here. And you can choose to change this if you hover over it here and I'll change these three values for you. And then also the alpha, hence RGBA. The alpha, we're just putting at 50%. Height 100% as well. And it's that fixed a certain issue where it wasn't working all the way vertically. So now if I run NPM start and click on notify me, now we can see this really cool sort of transparent window. Now, I normally wouldn't leave it like this because it makes it a little bit hard to see the content. So you could probably stand to bump that opacity value up from 0.5, maybe to 0.8 um, if you wanted to. So let's also take a look at how we can uh, make this window sticky. All right, so in other words, if I click on this, it's suddenly hidden, but I want it to stay on top no matter what. So to do that, and real quickly, we'll just close this out, All right? What we'll do is we're going to add another property under index.js. This is this property we'll put it just right here. Always on top will be set to true. Awesome, so now we'll rerun this. And now if I click this, or if I click anywhere, this will always stay on top. All right, finally, let's see what it takes to close this actual window. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and on our add JS, by the way, we're going to copy the first two lines from the index JS right here. We're also going to create a new one called remote, electron.remote. And then also let's get our close button, which is the ID of that little close window link. Right there. And then we're gonna say close BTN add event listener on click. We should be getting the hang of this by now. Pass in the event. And we're gonna say var window equals remote get current window because we want to close the window that that link is currently on. 
And then we say window.close. So let's save, run npm start, click on our notify button, and then click off of here. Awesome. Okay, so I, I know that was sort of a crash course and there was a lot to cover there. Uh, so in the next section, we're gonna take a look at actually retrieving that Bitcoin price and showing it in our index.html. All right, so as I said, we now need to fetch the price of Bitcoin and we're gonna do that by using an HTTP library called Axios. Now, this will connect to a cryptocurrency API. It's 100% free. It's called cryptocompare.com forward slash API, where you can learn more about the calls if you want to extend the functionality of what we're about to do. All right, so I'm going to switch over here to the desktop. And the first section that we're going to go to is in our source index.js file right here. And what I want to do now is view up or get up the view slash integrated terminal and we're going to install axios all right so to do that we use npm install axios and we're going to save it as a dependency now what we want to do is in our let's just go ahead and close this at the top of our index.js file we will import it so axios equals require axios all right very very simple so now we're ready to use Axios to make a request. So first, before we actually do that, let's create two other variables. The first is going to be a price. And we're going to say document query selector. That'll allow us to select just an H1 tag. And then also a target price is document get element by ID. And the ID of it is target price. All right, so first, again, this is selecting our H1, and then target price is selecting, if we come to our index.html, we have an ID right here of span ID target price. So this will show the target price that the user specifies in the ad window. All right, so now come in here, we're going to create a function. All right, so We'll just do this after this section. And so we're gonna make a function called get BTC for Bitcoin. And the reason I'm wrapping this in a function is because shortly after this, we're going to call this func function on an interval, like every 30 seconds. So we're gonna make our get request with Axios. And here's where we're gonna, I'm going to paste in real quickly a full URL just to get the current price of Bitcoin. And so this is the URL here. And if, by the way, you're, like I mentioned before, you want to see um, all that the Crypto Compare API is capable of, then we go here to cryptocompare.com forward slash API. So we have requests in here. Um, you have a lot of different stuff. For, for instance, under data is where you mainly want to look to get the current price of something. It tells you all the different request parameters and that it accepts. So the one, just to get the current US dollar right here, amount of what a one Bitcoin is worth, it is this address right here. Okay, so after this, we say, then take the response and we'll say our constant of cryptos, we're gonna bind the response to uh, cryptos response. Now, if you were to console log the response, you would find data, BTC USD, that is exactly what we want. So now we put price dot inner HTML. We're going to say equals a dollar amount plus cryptos. And we'll say to locale string, and this will make it a proper number format with comma separation. Okay. So now this in and of itself, as I mentioned before, it won't actually run because it's just a function that's not doing anything. So in order to make this run, we have to call it, get BTC, and then also set interval, when we'll put in get BTC and the amount of milliseconds. So for three or for 30 seconds, it would be 30,000 right here. 
All right. So now also, by the way, this is going to show the US dollar amount right here. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Oops, I ran the NPM install Axios. One second, NPM start, there we go. All right, and there it goes, it just showed up. So it's currently $9,833.54. Okay, so now that we actually have the price of Bitcoin, now we're gonna go ahead and cover how exactly we can take whatever's entered in here, the target price from which we want to be uh, notified of when it, when it breaks this price right here, how will we communicate that data from this window over to this part right here in the target price section. So now we're going to use the Electron IPC, which is an acronym for Inter-Process Communication. Sounds scary, but it's not. Basically, if you think of processes as windows, it's allowing communication between those windows or processes. I mean, it's made very easy. So the first thing we want to do is, I'm gonna bring up the sidebar here. We're gonna hop into our main JS file. This is where we're going to declare the main IPC. So when it comes to the IPC, there's two different types of processes. There's the renderer, which is IPC renderer, and then there's main, IPC main. We're just going to declare main once right here in our main JS, our, our bootstrapping file. And this is where it's going to receive all of the messages from the various processes or windows, and it will also send that data out to any of those processes or windows as we need it to. So the way we do this is we create a variable with I, as IPC, and this will be require electron IPC main. All right, and at the very bottom, Let's get rid of this. We're going to put in IPC dot on method, and we're looking for a message that's called update notify value. That's what we're going to call it when we call the IPC renderer from our add dot HTML file. So that's the name we're going to give it, and this is the name we're going to be looking for in the IPC main file. So then we have a function which handles an event in argument. And inside of here, we're going to say when web contents send. And we're going to send in something called, and this is where we're going to define the name of the message, target price val. And we're going to bind it to the response, which is whatever is entered into that text field in the add.html file. So this is going to send that value to win, and win is currently bound to our index.html file right here, back when we create the window, the browser window. All right, so it's very important that you understand this. It probably sounds like I'm being a little bit redundant. So this IPC main will catch the message that's sent from our add.html right here, and then it's going to send that back to our index.html, so it can be displayed here where it says choose a target price. So it's gonna replace that inner text. Okay, hopefully you understand that so far. So let's save that, we're not done yet though, because now we have to integrate the IPC renderer in our add.js file. So let's go to add.js. We're going to say right here is const IPC equals electron.ipc renderer. All right, now at the just right here, we'll put in a const of update btn equals document dot get element by ID. And this will be update btn. And we'll say update btn dot add event listener on click. We will say inside of here, we're going to use IPC, IPC, sorry, dot send method. And this is where we name it, update notify value. And then document 
we're going to pass in is the value is the document get element by ID and the inputs ID, which happens to be notify val dot value. Now also when that is submitted, we want to close that window, that little add HTML window. So we put var window equals remote dot get current window and then window.close. All right, so we'll save that. And we also have the IPC renderer that needs to be added to our index.html. So let's copy this real quick. So our index.js file, we're gonna add it right there. And then we're also going to create a we already have target price and price. All right, we don't have to create that then. We're just going to add another IPC.on target price val. So remember, target price val is set in here, right here. It's going to send this to this window, which happens to be an index. We're going to say function event arg, just a, the same as the last one on the IPC main. And then we're going to set our target price val to, we're going to put this in number format, the response, which is just a number that the user enters. And then also target price dot inner HTML equals the dollar sign concatenate target price I put target rice, target price val dot to locale string en. All right, so, okay, if you're a little bit confused, um, that's natural, but I tried to do my best to describe what's happening. It's just a matter of sending and receiving messages between these windows where IPC main in main.js is kind of the central hub from which it sends and then receives and relays these messages. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And if we're lucky at all, it's going to work. So let's go to view and we'll go to our integrated terminal, npm start. All right, it loaded the current price. Notify me when, we'll say 9,834, just you know, almost a dollar above. And there we go. It has now been set, and this now has access to it. Now, of course, at this point, it's not going to show any type of notification because we haven't yet worked that in. All right, so now the only thing left is to integrate a notification, a desktop notification that will show up once the price of one Bitcoin has exceeded the user-specified value. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to head into our index dot js file right here and first we're going to create a variable uh, for right here called var target price val all right and this is defined right here on our ipc on right here where we save the number to it and next we're going to create an object called notification and inside of it, we're going to have two properties, title, and this is going to be the title of the notification that shows up. We'll just say BTC alert, and then also body, and we'll say BTC just beat your target price. All right, so to actually show the notification, we're going to come down into our response from our API call. And we're going to put an if statement. So we're going to say if target price dot inner HTML doesn't equal empty. So if it's empty, we're not going to run this, or we're not going to show any type of notification because when the first app loads, uh, basically it's empty. So what we want to do is put and target price val is less than response.data.bitcoinbtc.usd. All right, so now we're gonna put in 
const my notification. This will give us access to what happens to that notification. We're gonna say new window dot notification. And then we're gonna pass in the notification title and notification itself. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. And I changed the three sec the three second value to one, just so we can we don't have to wait around just to see this notification. So now we're going to go to our terminal, type in npm start, and let's change this to something really low, like nine hundred dollars. So of course, when this fires in a few seconds down here. There it goes, Bitcoin alert, it just beat your target price. Awesome, so we can also add a custom icon notification. All right, to do that, we simply add to this object an icon property with pass the dot join. This is gonna give us the location in assets, images, btc.png. And right now, if you see my images folder, we'll see I have a btc.png file. And I got that from, all you have to do is visit this URL right here. And this is from iconarchive.com forward slash download, blah, blah, blah. You see it up here, hopefully. And when you do that, you can download it. And it's a bitcoin.ico file, but you can rename the ICO to PNG just fine and name it btc, all lowercase, dot png, and put it in that images folder right here. All right, so once you do that, you can go ahead and save it, rerun it, set a value right here, and we'll say 900, update, and now with any luck, it will show up down here, that new uh, little, there it is, and that's great. All right, so you can also go a little bit further with notifications and actually do a little bit more advanced things based on the specific operating system, whether that be Windows or Mac. So just to show you real quickly, uh, the official documentation, it shows under here for advanced notifications for under the Windows section, you can use what's called the Userland module Electron Windows Notifications right here and you can actually integrate this and it'll give you usage options and the reason you would want to do this is it allows for advanced notifications with custom templates images and other flexible elements same thing with mac os we have advanced notifications where you you can even have an input field this is kind of um, useful for example if somebody responds to and you have a chat app or something like that you can allow the user to quickly reply in the actual notification. I'm not gonna cover that in this course just because this is a beginner's course and we don't wanna do anything advanced or anything like that. So I may do a separate tutorial though and you can look for that on my channel. Okay, so at this point, the app is done. I know, <laughs> not very complex, but these beginner courses, you know, it doesn't make sense to do anything complex. We wanna get your feet wet, obviously. Um, so now going forward in the next and final lesson, we're going to cover how we can create a deployed build from which you could send to other people and then it can use your actual executable application. All right, so let's go ahead and make our app an actually deployed app with an executable. And I'm gonna show you how to do it for each of the three operating systems. So to do this, the very first thing we need to do is install what's called the Electron Packager. So in our project, npm install electron-packager and then save as a dev dependency. And as this installs, we're gonna go back to our project here and it just finished and to our package JSON file. All right, so we're going to, by the way, uh, when it comes to, you know, the name of your app, you're going to want it to, to be whatever you want it to be, your, your version, your description, all that stuff. Um, now would be a good time to actually fill that in. And um, the, the section that we're going to go to and, and modify specifically is under scripts. So we're going to create a script for each of the three 
operating systems to create a deployment. Now, I must say before I go any further, um, this right here is a page when I searched on Google and typed in, you know, how to properly deploy a, a an Electron app. This is the very first result that came up and it's very well expanded on in terms of, you know, the, the manual steps it takes to, um, you know, make a deployment out of all of these. So if I go down all the way here to shortcuts, the only thing we need to do is just copy this right here within the scripts, close it out, and then paste those three right there. All right, so now we have a uh, npm run package-mac, package-win, and Linux commands that we can now run to install for each one of these. Now, before you try to run any of them, you'll see that some of them have certain flags that are added. For instance, the icon. It's defining a path like assets, icons, Mac, icon, ICNS file. We also have for Windows, the, uh, the, the actual icon location is icons win icon.ico. You also see if we go a little bit further, we'll see we have, for instance, the product name. You may want to change this section as well. So I'm going to change that. I'm just going to call this crypto app. All right, and so just the, port, the important part to remember is to have these, depending on if you're making just a, you know, a build for all of them or just for Windows, in my case, just to demonstrate this, make sure that this file right here exists. So fortunately, we can just reuse that other one. So I'm gonna save this, we're done in here, but what I wanna do now is create that folder. And so that's going to be in icons, let me just um, reveal and explore and make this a little bit easier. So we're gonna create a folder here, Control Shift N on Windows, and this is going to be called, let's see, icons, and then win. And inside of here, we're gonna go to images, we're gonna copy this btc.png, go back to icons, win, and inside of here, we're gonna rename this whole thing to icon.ico. That's the file that it's going to look for. All right, so now, once we have all that ready, we can now run one of the scripts. So I'm just, instead of using the integrated terminal, it's a little bit hard for you to see because the text is small on that. So I'm just gonna go back to my regular console here. All right, we're going to run npm run package win. If any luck, with any luck, there will be no issues here. And while this is running, and it doesn't take that long, great. Now it says wrote new app to release hyphen builds, and then the name Electron Tutorial App, open up, reveal and explore. Here it is. Here's the actual app. And if we double click this, there we go. Let's see if this works. We'll just say 300, a real Small amount it should show up down here. There we go. And it now works. All right, guys, hopefully you learn quite a bit throughout this. I really, I think that this is just a very good, hopefully solid starting point from which you can really begin to learn more. Um, so hopefully I was able to provide that stepping stone. All right, I'm Gary Simon of Corsetro. I will see you later.